This is a high security quarantine zone. The people in here are receiving medical attention, but the doctors aren't trying to cure them. They're trying to infect them with the flu virus. Because this is a clinical test to see how people deal with flu. 10 volunteers are infected and their illness is monitored over three weeks to see how they fare. It's only through research like this that we can learn more about this virus. How dangerous is flu? In the UK, we had about 12,500 deaths last year. If you then expand that to worldwide, there was something like half a million. And then you've got many, many more millions where there's severe illness, where they're incapacitated for a week or two or something. So you're young, you're elderly, you're immunocompromised. And what's the difference between having a cold and having flu? Generally, it's the symptoms you present with. You, you can have your snotty, runny nose, a little bit of a headache, a bit of feeling unwell. But if you then start presenting more systemic symptoms, you're feeling a bit achy, you've got a temperature, then that would probably be a good indicator. But ultimately, we need to have a laboratory diagnosis to actually make that formal, proper diagnosis. So what is the flu virus? And why is it so particularly deadly? It's easy to think that flu is a modern disease. The press is full of how new flus are crossing from birds and pigs to humans in the markets of China. But actually, its history as a human disease goes back a surprisingly long way, to about 10,000 years ago. Back then, big changes were happening in the way we Homo sapiens lived. We stopped being nomadic and started setting up permanent homes in communities. And that's when many experts believe our flu problems began, because we stopped hunting and gathering and started farming and domesticating animals. Until then, influenza was only an animal disease. It infected birds, horses, wild boar and our contact with these animals was rare. But when we started to raise animals domestically, we brought them into direct, daily physical contact with other animals and ourselves. And that's when a few viruses began to jump between species. In these primitive farms, many experts think that the virus first jumped from birds to pigs. And then it was just a matter of time until flu jumped again to humans. Human influenza can be a huge killer. For instance, the 1918 outbreak of Spanish flu killed over 50 million people. But exactly how does the flu virus work? For the purposes of what we're going to try, this is a flu virus. Now, you may have heard flu viruses be given various names, like H5N1, H7N9. Well, they're important letters, those H's and N's, because they refer to the proteins that allow the virus to get in and out of cells within our body. So, on our virus, these fittings here, these are like the, the H's, the haemagglutinin. And this one here, that's the N, the neuraminidase. So there's the virus. Now, this is like the cell membrane. It actually coats the entrance to my workshop. This won't allow anything of this size through into the workshop, the interior of the cell. Now, once this virus drifts up towards the membrane, if it has the correct proteins, the correct haemagglutinin, it can stick to the cell membrane. And once it's stuck on there, the cell will invite it inside. <laughs> 